Hey folks, uh, I thought I would make a video around the topic of the correct color choice for building a 5150 uh, tribute guitar. There's been a lot of discussion in the in the uh, online groups lately about which color should I use, and you know there's there's a lot of different you know ways you can go with this, but it seems like um, you know the biggest like the common answer given when a new group member posts the question what paint do i start with um the the most common answer given is usually this duplicolor which is the de 1607 the chevy orange and i wanted to just kind of talk about you know some advantages or maybe some disadvantages to this material versus other options that are available and maybe even talk about what could go wrong with this and kind of give a little bit of uh, tips on maybe how to prevent some problems from happening so the first thing i will say is if you're a new painter or new to building any of these replicas or tribute guitars first things first you always need to spray out a little sample board and these are just little little pieces of wood you know i just tape them down to like a paint stir stick you know and i i make several of these so if you're just starting out and you you know just got your body and your neck and you're raring to go the best advice i can say is always start with some type of a sample board and test out all of your products exactly as you would paint the body because you're going to have you know 200 plus dollars invested in a body maybe a little more depending on where you live depending on what type of wood you've used and to just all of a sudden throw paint on it and hope it works is kind of a bad strategy so that's first things first let's you know do some sample boards first get those ready buy the products that you think you're going to want to use and test them out so what i'm going to tell you though about the color choices um you know you can see a lot of different uh shades of reds and oranges in the different um photos floating around on the internet and i'm not going to post any photos to kind of show my you know to show the way I lean towards a certain color because I don't want to post any, you know, accidentally post like a copyrighted photo. But I guarantee most of you that are doing this, you've already collected a huge, you know, library of reference photos that you're going to work from to, you know, paint the guitar, stripe the guitar and everything like that. And it really depends on the quality of the photo taken, what was the lighting of the environment where the photo was taken was it taken while eddie was on stage under a certain color stage can light was the guitar photographed in a natural room light um all sorts of things are you viewing the the photo online on a decent monitor or are the color settings of the monitor you know skewed one direction or the other for like you know low blue light i mean there's there's a million different reasons why a you know this guitar could look more orange in one photo or more red in another so take that into consideration and also know that when it comes down to it you're going to have to make your own decision make your own educated decision don't just you know follow what everyone in a group tells you to buy because that's what they believe or that's what they like or that's what they chose because all of these products behave differently depending on the climate that you live in, uh, what time of year it is that you're going to be working with these. So you got to take all that into consideration and make you know, the most educated decision that you possibly can. So we'll start with um, my 5150 replica here. I painted this about four years ago using a custom mix of the uh the wa uh the 77 was it 53 this is the chevrolet official 71 now this code is kept at the sherwin williams um in their catalog so all i had to do was walk in to my local automotive 
uh, division of Sherwin Williams. They were just a local store, and I said, "Hey, I'm, I'm I need Chevrolet seventy one or the WA was it seven seven five three? They mixed up this can, okay? And a lot of people use this stuff. They, they and and I believe this is probably the closest color that you can have mixed based on all of the other reference photos that we have available online for Eddie's original guitar. It seems to be the right amount of orange in lighting. It seems to be the right amount of red. But when working with this type of a product, this this is a base coat. Okay, this is for an automotive two-part system where you have um, a sheet metal, you know, panel for a car that's been primed already. You go spray this from a compressor from a gun and then you're going to have to cover it with a clear coat product so it's a two-part system this paint here is a very fragile paint it is not durable at all in fact in my original series on building this guitar um i was relicking all of this area here and all these other all the scratches and everything was very easy to scrape off of the Wimbledon white underneath of it. And the reason was because this is a kind of a fragile paint. This is a base coat. This base coat kind of, when you when I scraped on it, it sort of acted like that material that's on like a lottery ticket scratch off. You know what I'm saying? Where you could take a, a coin and start scraping away at it and it would just come right off. So if I didn't protect this, this would not be ideal as a top coat because it's not durable enough. Every time I would sit down to play it, if I'd have kept it un, you know, unprotected, you know, every little time it scratched across maybe like a rivet on my blue jeans or, you know, a, a belt buckle or a, a, a button on a shirt or jacket, it would leave a million little scrapes on here. So this guitar was protected with a Sherwin Williams clear coat and I added a flattening agent to the clear coat to dull it down because Eddie's guitar was not clear coated but that was a decision I had to make because I went with this type of a product which is a base coat intended for automotive applications to be clear coated and protected so I used it for my application and it worked really really well now back to the DE1607 this is an enamel this is a specially formulated enamel, look at this, with ceramic. Okay, so there, there's already things in here. This is built to withstand heat up to 500 Fahrenheit. Okay, so this already has a specialized application. So be aware of that. When you're using this product, it's an enamel. And what I see recommended all the time on the forums is yeah get you some Wimbledon white I'm actually I'm holding a can of Toyota white I ran out of the Wimbledon white but pretend this is the Wimbledon white comes in this can it's the perfect match these are lacquers this is a lacquer based paint okay lacquer adheres to lacquer in other words if you have a uh, one coat of lacquer that's Wimbledon white and you spray another coat of lacquer it's going to adhere to it chemically. It's going to bond chemically to each other. Same thing with uh, lacquer sanding sealers. You've got a bare body that you're going to start with. You want to put a lacquer sanding sealer on it and then go with a lacquer based product. You can really run into some problems here when you start mixing enamels and lacquers. Chemically, they don't always work together. Now, I know some people have been doing this for a long time. And they've had very good results with mixing the two. And in order to get a good uh, to get a good adhesion with the enamel, you I think you have to work really slow and in very light coats. That was the you know the best tip I read um, to get these to work. However, in my test sprays, I was unsuccessful. And what happens when lacquers and enamels react, you can see in this sample board, so everything from the top of this black stripe going this direction, that is the DE1607. I hit it with a lacquer top coat, and you can see what looks like, like a dried up lake bed that's called crazing. The lacquer just immediately shriveled up on top of it, so it had a chemical reaction. So you can easily run into that problem mixing 
you know, a Wimbledon white, which is a lacquer, if it's perfect match, if it's this product here, if you mix that with an enamel, you may see that that happen right there. Or you may get some serious orange peel. I've seen a lot of different results in the groups where as soon as they sprayed the DE1607 on top of that Wimbledon white, they just did not like each other. They had immediate orange peel and other inhibition problems, okay? So I personally don't like the DE1607, and I know some guys get great results with it, more power to you. Beyond the chemical issues, the bonding issues, or the reaction issues I've had with it, I simply don't like the color of it. And I just had to make my own educated decision to not use it. So if you look on the second, on the lower half of this board, that is a color called torch red. It's a GM color and it's GM color 70. Well, if you go back to my original can of Sherwin Williams, it's Chevrolet 71. This is Chevrolet 70. It's, it's in the same spectrum of reds. It's one number off. I'm not saying it's one color shade off. I'm just saying it's right there in the same spectrum. So Chevy has been using this recently, I think on Camaros and Corvettes. And in certain lighting, it can lean more red. So if you're in that camp where after you've done all of your research, you think that the 5150 leans more red, or if you just personally want yours to look more red, then I would highly suggest going with the torch red if you want to spray with a canned lacquer, which is what this is. So these two will perform great together because this is a lacquer, this is a lacquer. You spray this Wimbledon white down, then you come back with the torch red and it's going to adhere to it uh, chemically and it's going to have a nice solid bond. You're not going to have a lot of issues. You'll see in this body here, just off to the frame, I'm building this one right now, and I used the Torch Red. Now, compared to the guitar body next to it, where I used the Sherwin-Williams, the WA7753, it's just a little more red, but I think in a good way. And we're looking at it here under a very bright shop light overhead. One of those uh, shop LEDs. Okay, and I think that color matches up quite well. If anything, the, the Sherwin-Williams is just a little more pale of a red. But that is the lacquer product right there. And I was able to, because this is a lacquer, I wasn't planning on relicking this, by the way. So I was able to go over it with another clear lacquer to protect it. This is a clear semi-gloss. Again, I didn't want it to be too glossy, but I wanted it to have a little bit of durability. And that stuff sprayed beautifully. The, the nice thing about lacquer paint is it dries almost instantly. Okay, so let's talk about that difference real quick because lacquer, once you spray it, will dry to the touch within just a few seconds or a few minutes. And you can almost start working with it in terms of peeling tape off or wet sanding it literally within... 10 to 15 minutes depending on how thick of the coat is but one of the downsides with lacquers is the the temperature and the environment of the humidity and things like that it, it needs to be controlled you need to spray this in a controlled environment and I have access to a paint booth at work so I'm fortunate there but when I was spraying this body over here it was in the dead of summer and I couldn't quite control the humidity level like I wanted to in the area where the paint booth existed. So I had to wait for the humidity to drop. At that point, it was right around 80%, which is awful. But I thought, well, I'm in an air-conditioned shop. That should be fine. Well, it wasn't. I started getting uh, what's called blushing, where you spray it, and then it would kind of cloudy up or fog up. So to remedy that, I just waited um, for the paint to fully dry, did a wet sand over it, Resprayed it under better, more optimal conditions when the humidity percentage had dropped below like 60 to 50 percent below that. Um, so, yes, you have to take all those things into consideration because it's not just spray it and hope for the best. You have to read the label, read the label for what they recommend for you to spray this 
in temperature wise same thing with the with the enamels so enamels basically cure like nail polish or the old remember the old testers model paint and the little the little tiny glass bottles those are all little enamels okay and those used to take days to fully cure because they're that's the the difference those cure this paint cures this paint dries okay so that's why this dries to the touch within minutes this paint will be curing for days after you sp after you spray it um in fact you could probably you know put a put you know take your fingernail and press it right into your your guitar body you know several hours later and it'll still be soft because the enamel is going to take days to cure it's got to off gas you know while it chemically hardens it's got to off gas it's going to be soft whereas a lacquer you can paint it it's almost dry immediately so i think the final point here to make is that color comparison and like i said do your own color comparisons don't rely on me because i don't you don't know what the color settings are on your monitor if you're seeing it accurately you got to see this in person in your own lighting environment take it outdoors look at it inside kind of make a best a best educated decision off of what you're going to see in your home this is the de 1607 this is the torch red both on an, uh, the wimbledon white and you can see just a little bit you can see how much more red is popping so if you're in the camp that leans towards that more reddish color if you prefer that i would highly recommend the torch red if you want to risk it and try the enamel and lacquer mixture thing okay try the de1607 but it's going to come out looking like that and if you compare these two again on these bodies you can see just a slight color variation actually between the, the color variation is not as big between the D1607 and the WA7753 but when you compare that to the torch red it's, it is quite noticeable uh, if you've done your homework and you've looked up uh, if you've read any of the posts from George Felice the guy who actually painted these guitars actually let, let me cover that that sort of internet myth as well Eddie did not paint these guitars, first of all. Second of all, he did not paint with Schwinn bicycle paint. Those rumors got carried over from the Frankenstrat. If you've built the Frankenstrat, which is a completely different animal, those stories are confirmed. Eddie painted the Frankenstrat, the white and black, in his backyard or garage, and then went back over it like a year later with the red. Okay, that's a completely different guitar. We're talking about this Kramer 5150 which was built in a shop um, by Kramer by the guys at Kramer and the painter whose name is George Felice has posted many photos of him at the paint booth uh, painting these guitars with RN paint and we know back in what was it 80 82 83 the whole clear coat systems and automotive paint didn't exist yet so he was probably using like an acrylic paint like a single stage automotive paint where you could have sprayed it and then wet sanded it and then buffed it to a shine it was a completely different paint formulation than what what you can buy today that's old school painting so he's posted photos of his actual paint mixing table you can see the cans of rm paint you know it was automotive paint um, so the whole thing with getting the Schwinn, the, what is it? The sunset orange paint. That's great. If you're going to do that, only do it for the reason that you think the color is close, but I think you can get just as close with a $10 can of, you know, over the counter paint from your local auto parts store as you can spending 60, somewhere 70, who knows what it is up to now, maybe upwards of $80 a can to get one of those shipped. You know, if you're going to do that, do it because you believe the color is closer. Don't do it because Eddie did it, because he didn't. That that guitar, this guitar was painted by George Felice in a shop. So that's that. I hope it clears up some misinformation and maybe gives you a little bit of, of you know, insight into what or how you should approach this. I'm not telling you to paint it with Torch Red. I'm not telling you to paint it with the DE1607. 
I'm just telling you there are pros and cons to both. There's pitfalls to using either one of these that you got to be aware of. And, and again, first and foremost, the only way to answer those questions to which one is better for you to use is to make you a sample board. Try it out. Make multiples. All these have been tried out in different ways. This I ran out of my um, Wimbledon white, so I just used Olympic white that I used on my uh, 78 uh, VH, the Van Halen 1 uh, Frankenstrap. But the purpose of spraying this one was just to see how that paint would buff out after I sprayed that uh, the lacquer. I wanted to see how well both of these behaved. So another sample board. I wanted to spray it and buff it and see how it looked without a clear coat. Um, this one was just a test to see if I liked a certain flat clear coat. This is a, uh, was this a Rust-Oleum dead flat that I sprayed on this lower half and then compared it to this half, which didn't get, uh, was it semi-gloss? I got a Watco semi-gloss, you know? So there's a lot of reasons, you know, to make you some sample boards and, and uh, to try certain techniques or to try different uh, clear coats or to try different buffing or to try it with a different white. Some of you don't want the, the older Wimbledon white look. Some of you may want a brighter, newer white. You know, so there's a lot of reasons to make these sample boards. So I can't recommend that enough. That needs to be your starting point from day one is to start trying to see what colors you like in your environment and to see how well the paint is going to behave when you start using the, the products and combining them together. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful and I appreciate you guys sticking with me on this video. Take care and uh, stay tuned for more builds.